There was this great architect whose name is Cedric Price. He has a quote, technology is the answer, but what was the question? More than half of the world's population lives in urban areas, and that figure is only expected to rise. Our concrete world was built on old ideas and faces new problems, from macro issues like climate change to individual feelings of isolation. Framlab is a research and design studio that's trying to change the fabric of our cities in response to these challenges. We are dealing with what we've given, and it's a bit of a cookie-cutter situation, and it hasn't really been any kind of dialogue around these things in any meaningful ways. Framlab has multiple conceptual projects that work within the confines of our urban landscape, laying the future on top of our existing infrastructure. Today, we're going to be exploring three of those ideas. The construction industry as we know it today is predominantly reliant on a linear production mode. When we design and build for the future, we tend to have these very rigid and permanent ideas of what that future is. But we need to recognize that a building will have many lifetimes, different chapters. And really designing too rigidly for this first life can be problematic from a sustainability standpoint. And I think the pandemic, as with, as with so many things, it's been also accelerating change. We've really been confronted with the interiority of these, these buildings. And I think it's made us realize that things could also be improved upon. Open House is a project that seeks to explore the capacity of housing to address chronic loneliness and uh, social isolation by implementing some key strategies to allow for these social interactions to happen more fluidly. So specifically, we've been working with sort of placing these soft edges, so-called, in between transitions. So that could be from circulation spaces into the apartment space, it could be from the streetscape into the, the, the building. Trying to deliberately subdivide the unit into zones, which would then be along a gradient of private to public. So having kind of the inner part of the unit being much more focused on the privates and sort of being, being thought of as almost as a, a sanctuary. And then the front of house, if you will, will be the one that's much more extroverted and, and, and connected to the larger housing building. That's the micro scale, but on a macro level, human-driven climate change is heating up our cities and the construction materials we use are making things worse. Our current solution is to use AC to make inside spaces more comfortable, a process which expels warm air from buildings, raising urban temperatures further. These systems consume so much energy that the heat they generate actually exacerbates the problem. The cities are warming up almost twice as fast as the global average. And this is due to the so-called the urban heat island effect. Overshi or Oversky is a, a research project that really tries to imagine a new kind of infrastructure that addresses the need for cooling in cities. But it's also a bit of a confrontation with the current means of dealing with, with cooling in our cities, which are making it worse. The project is proposing the use of nano treatments of the surface that is aligning with a certain wavelength that reflects the, the radiation through the atmosphere. And then this is also coupled with a a set of thin water pipes that run right beneath the surface that will then be cooled down. And then you have this temperature delta that you can use to cool down you know, adjacent buildings, as well as the interiority of the, the modules themselves. So in many ways, the project is really attempting to give form to this technology, both architecturally and, and urbanistically. And it's done so through the, the set of uh, modules that are you know, in many ways designed to maximize the, the, the surface area to allow this process to happen. And then what's also happening architecturally is that you, you do create these new type of what I call a cloudscape that could become a new sort of public space for the cities and could really be programmed to work with the, the local needs of the neighborhood you're in. And then another technology that, that is used here is so-called lighter than air technology. We're using lift gas, letting these volumes then float up and become this new layer above urban streets. The final project we're looking at today seeks to reconnect urban environments with the food chain through towering tree-like structures that act as farms. A lot of my work is really making use of the so-called sort of leftover spaces in cities. That's the case with, you know, Oroshi, that's the case with several others that sort of tries to leverage the, the so-called leftover spaces. Glossier is a 
It's a community-based system for urban vertical farming. It's intended to be a, a hyper-local design intervention that reconnects neighborhoods with food production and also combats the issues of uh, food insecurity. It's making use of these greenhouse modules that are really facilitating this aeroponic growth medium inside of it. And that is a, an environment in, in which the crops are picking up the nutrients through a misty environment instead of soil. And it would allow for the crops to grow much, much faster compared to a soil-based uh, growth medium. The idea is that all energy will be harvested through photovoltaic uh, modules at the top, and all water that's necessary for irrigation would also be collected through rainwater that would you know, bring it down into, through the trunk into a water tank, and then it would just be pumped through the modules so it would be a closed loop system. So it would be entirely self-reliant and, and wouldn't need to be, be plugged into existing infrastructure. The interesting part of the project to me is how we were looking at how tree grows and how tree behaves and try to systematize those ideas into the structure which would allow the system, and this is, is potentially where AI would come in, to really optimize the structure for ideal distribution of the greenhouse modules. So each structure will be unique because the, the environment it's sitting in uh, will be slightly different, accounting for adjacent structures, shades, wind patterns. All of these things will play into the, the, the shaping of the structure. Down the line, it, it would be amazing to have these erected within a host of different neighborhoods and really seeing how the community would be engaging with it. It's funny to me that our ambition is to just make it less worse. We're chasing net zero, but we need to go beyond net zero, have a positive ecological footprint. What's interesting to me is that cities are perpetrator and the victim as well. It is you know, responsible for the lion's share of greenhouse gas emissions. It's producing a lot of waste, pollution. And then it's also at the front line for the consequences with a temperature and sea level rises. But cities are also the solution to, to addressing these issues in many ways. One would be the density and efficiencies of cities where you are maximizing the use of resources and energy. And then there's also the, the, sort of the cultures and the, the sort of this collective intelligence of cities that allows for technologies and, and regulations and incentives and, and new practices to be implemented. FramLab is just one organization trying to solve the issues left to us by past generations. Some of the ideas for the future of urban sustainability may seem wild, but they're important in starting necessary conversations. Outside of slow-moving government regulations, we need to reimagine the way we live and consider its impact on ourselves and the wider world. If you know of any local projects to rework your urban environment, if there's a nonprofit or design studio you think we should look into, let us know in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, let us know by hitting the like button. Stay tuned to Engadget.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest tech news.